Dear Papaji, my question is about the relationship, if any, between the psyche and the soma. Soma, you want to say? <clears throat> According to J. Krishnamurti, at the moment of liberation, there is also a physical transformation of the brain cells. Is this correct or incorrect? Or perhaps in a way both correct and incorrect? Another thinks another thinker, Yuji Krishnamurti, relates that psychological transformation is wholly a bodily process and cannot be affected in any way by one by one's mode of perceiving reality seem to have discerned the proper answer to these questions. The other day when you said that in real freedom there is no longer even the mind, thoughts, and the body. So all the points of view, points of view have dropped away as unnecessary and irrelevant conceptualization. Am I understanding you correctly? Robert Powell. <coughs> to speak of any cells in the body, brain cells, is, a, is merely a physical idea, because the cells are in the brain, so it belongs to physicality. And the other, <coughs> Yuji says that he doesn't agree with. So both these concepts are not correct, in my view. Because whether you agree or disagree, belong to the same mind. It comes from the mind. Agreement or disagreement are mental. So the total freedom is, ultimate reality is, that ne never ever anything existed. So, who is to understand if there are body cells or not? Who is to say against or in favor? Say something in favor, you need mind. What is mind itself? You don't need any mind. You never existed, nothing ever existed, not even the Creator itself. And we all belong to the belonging of the Creator. Creator must have this thing. When you speak of creation, there must have been a Creator. I don't think if even Creator had been created before any creation, before creation there must have been something which cannot be spoken about or described about. You can't give it a name of even nothingness, emptiness, enlightenment, freedom, whatever. There's no word even. Word is only a definition of communication between two persons. Even, even a single person is not there, not alone, not even God was there. So that is called ultimate 
ultimate reality, and that is always here and now. Not that you have to gain it or attain it through some teacher or any preacher. You have to return to your ultimate understanding. Where does this concept comes that I exist? I exist. So if you search for the source of I, it will straightway take you to that, to that place or no place which I just speak about. So any question about it? No, sir. Quite clear now. Hmm? Quite, it's quite clear. clear. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have known both of them. Krishna ji and you ji have known both of them. <laughs> yes. Krishna ji in Sana and Bombay, Varanasi, during his lectures. And you ji wanted to see me when he was traveling in south of India, Bangalore. He met someone, some of my friends, and he wanted to see me. He wrote to me in Lucknow. So I wrote to him that uh, you need not come here. I am going to Caracas from Bombay. So it is better you come to Bombay and we will meet there. So he gave me the address that I would be staying with the Swiss consulate. He was with many of his uh, students also. So the time was given, I had gone there. <laughs> yeah, it was a good meeting. And straightway, as his habit is, I don't, I don't believe. First of all, he addressed to his students and consulate, and his wife was also there. And uh, he introduced me that uh, he doesn't know about Punjaji, but uh, you can ask him anything that you like. And then he, he himself spoke a question, he asked a question that I don't believe in any kind of experiences whatsoever. He said, then I told him, you will only believe when you have one. <laughs> Like this. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. You must have experienced, then only you have to believe. <laughs> so then I met him in, in, in Start also. We knew already, so I met him. In Start he gave me a dress. In Shelley's Sunshine, I met him and had gone here. <laughs> So this is the this is the teaching. You, see. you don't need any teaching. What teaching do you need, first of all? What teaching do you need to understand what someone else has understood? So you are collecting your understanding, piling up your memory, isn't it? What else is there? But what I speak about is empty your memory, empty your concepts, and what has been stored so far in the memory, empty it. And then perhaps if you are absolutely empty, empty of all the concepts, then there's no mind. Then you return to no mind. And through no mind, you will understand what is the source of no mind even. <laughs> so 
So it is very simple, you see. You don't need any teaching, any teacher. <laughs> Okay, thank you.